they got certain things that they, they study black people. Uh, the British government, which is the United States, is only uh, Britannia. There is no United States, never was. It was just only something that Britain put together for an experiment. Even the laws, your laws, which governs your whole system, is patented by Britain. You see what I'm saying? So we are under the Queen. And it's not by mistake that they have the Queen in this new movie. You see, which is probably going to win an Academy Award. You see what I'm saying? And they always get one of the best actors, this, this British actress, Helen Mirren, which is a real good actress. They get those so that they can win the Academy Award because these are rituals. So they study the actual cities because of certain caliber, a certain brand of black people in those particular cities. And they monitor these particular things. Fortunately, the last four or five years, um, black people have gone to a certain savage level, and that's good. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Yeah. When the Arabs was going across Africa, and, you know, right after Muhammad, they went across Africa, and if you didn't submit to Islam, they cut your head off and you died. So they basically was, you know, the whole top part of Africa, they basically was, you know, was uh, uh, wiping out traditional cultures, and wiping out traditional cultures and, and converting them into Islam. The Dogon tribe of Mali reverted into this savage-like behavior. It was a part of a decoy. You know, for some, you know, I don't know this like a bunch of crazy people. And so when the, when the Arabs got there, the Arabs was like, these people are so savage and so crazy, they don't deserve Islam. Thus they left them alone, thus preserved the culture. See what I'm saying? That's what's happening with black people. As far as our behavior, as far as our status, we are at the lowest level, and that is divine because that is the decoy. That means they're not worried about you. Now they're worried about the Mexicans. <laughs> Immigration and all this now because they let you go. You see, they're not worried about you because they say that your his 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 arrogance or his confidence will be his undoing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he's infallible now. So do me a favor, just like they tell you on the plane, cut the cell phones off. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And while I cut them all off, you know, we, we in this digital age now, and cellular age, cut the cell phones off. You don't want to mess up the video for the people in Atlanta, Chicago, or whatever, and they be talking shit. Who's that nigga that, you know? You know, so, you, know so, you gotta tell you like they do, you know, uh, you know, cut the cell phones off. But anyway, getting down to this, it looks hopeless with black people, and that's a part of the design. We're gonna go into some things today. We're gonna go into some stuff that's interesting here. Um, you know, I'm studying Kemet, studying you know, you know, I, I did the Kemet thing all of the night and said, I'm, I'm in China now. Because we got to understand this thing that our information is universal. It's, you know, so to just focus on one continental aspect or one part of a continent, you miss the whole boat. You see what I'm saying? I'm in Tibet. All of that is black culture. You see, but I'm sitting down at the bus stop back in September and I look down and there's somebody left a Bible there. And I guess the spirit was like saying, well, there's some stuff in there you need to go in and retrieve. And I opened the Bible up and it went to Moab. 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 And then I saw a story on, on Turner Classic movies, the story of Ruth. All of this stuff is nothing but no matter these white faces or whatever, we just live in other lands and we were, or were a universal people. And these stories of our people, that's all over the earth. So it was one guy it was at the Melanin Conference back in, 19, in, in, in um, 2001. Some African brother wrote a book. He had gone and, t and he had traced all these little, you know, they got all these Jacobites, Mobites, yeah. you know, all these names in the Bible. And he said, well, let me see if this different stuff is live. And he went to the area where they were supposedly had, he said, he found all kind of black people there under those names. Mm -hmm. I, so our people are all over the thing. And so at this particular time, you can't throw out nothing. I'm like, well, look at this Bible. And I opened it up and it said more about it. And I said, well, it's going to tell me something that I'm going to have to go in here and get. 
I had already understood that back, back in 1998 that your Old Testament is nothing but a retranslation of Hermetic texts, or the Tahuti texts, or the 29,000 papyrus, the 30,000 papyrus rolls of Tahuti. And basically, there were no exclusive people. All these people basically just edited pieces of these libraries from Timothy and stuff. So the Old Testament, if you understand it in the way it is, it's an authentic piece, but it's coming from to some Tahuti stuff. You see what I'm saying? Now, in order to understand that, you like to say, you got an Old Testament and New Testament that's this thick. And yet the Jews got an Old Testament that isn't really that's perpetrating the fraud. <laughs> got a, 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 a five books of Moses. The Old Testament is this big. Now wait a minute, now hold on. You got two books that's this big, and they got a book called the Tanakh. You can get them right there in Barnes and Nobles and Gordon, the Tanakh. It's, it's pronounced T-A-K-A-N-A, Tanakh. It's pronounced as a Takana in the English with the way it looks, but it's pronounced Tanakh. And it's an Old Testament that's this thick. And I was able to get this Tanakh, and I was seeing all these Egyptian words up in there. Mm -hmm. I saw Aset up in there. I saw Isis up in there. I saw... I'm in law, I saw certain, about five different names for Heru or Horus. And then you realize that this stuff was not far from the translation of what they originally got it from. And you get the, the book, Gary Greenberg's book, um, 101 Myths of the Bible, by Gary Greenberg, where they actually showed the papyrus where Samson and Delilah came from. It was Raheru Kahuti or Raha Kiwit, uh, 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 Raha Kiwi and this other goddess and stuff like that. So they show each where these particular Bible myths or Old Testament myths come from. You see, so that means we can't be sectarian now in saying, oh, I'm only going to study only Kemet. Well, I'm only going to study only this. I'm only going to study only Yoruba. We are separated from the world of that being a complete system by two, three thousand years. So that means in order for you to get it, you got to get it from everywhere. So the guy Ahmed Osman, when he drafted the book, Akhenat and Moses, one and the same, it's now called Moses, Pharaoh of Egypt. Ahmed Osman, he, he, what he didn't get from the Book of the Dead, or what he didn't get from papyrus, he got from the Bible, and what he didn't get from the Bible, he got from the Quran. And this is the way they do research. Because even though some of the stuff might be translated and distorted, there's things that's always left behind. You see, always left behind. Oh, I don't know where I was going with this, but... <laughs> anyway. <coughs> anyway. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so I'm going to show some, some prophecies in... Uh, we'll get some sister to come up and read it. In uh, Deuteronomy. And we'll show where these prophecies came from. They came from the perfect sermon of Ascalipius. Mm -hmm. uh, under Ascalipius, the perfect sermon, which is Tehuti giving the prophecy to Imhotep. Mm -hmm. And so that, that whole Ascalipius thing, which will give you a bibliography that you can find those, is a reenactment in Deuteronomy, same shit. And we was re I, was, I did a lecture in Baltimore. Um, right before Christmas, and the sister who was a Choctaw elder, which is like a, a Native American sect, she started reading it, and the chills was coming because what they was talking about, we're going through now. By like endless and endless amounts of pain and suffering. It's just like when you look up one day and say, man, I made it. You see what I'm saying? Next day you lose your job. It's just over and over, endless amount of pain and suffering. And so, this is what the people who fake, fake their um, lives on when we talk about these, these, these European Jews. Whereas they chronicle these particular aspects of pain and suffering and try to make like they were people pain and suffering, but yet they're the richest people on the planet. <laughs> and like, true to nature, our thing don't change. You can go get W.E.B. Du Bois books from the early 1900s. 
and what he was writing on, and we going through the same damn thing. You can hear Malcolm, you can hear Martin, you can hear speeches from the 1960s, and you were like, is this 1964, or is this, 19, is this 2004, or 2007? It's, it's the same. Our, our suffering is une unending. But, remember, at this particular time, when it seems the most dismal and bleak, that is because if our situation seemed to be a lot better, they would be killing us in mass right now. So sometimes our um, plight is a decoy. People go, we don't see nothing in value and virtue with these people. We got all their black leaders. They are doing nothing but uh, uh, trying to put forth our agenda. You look at these people like Jesse and Al Sharpton or any of these type of Negroes and you go, do you think when you get on this TV and you're discussing stuff from in front of white people, do you think that one iota of what you're saying has to be an agenda that is not created by the white man? <laughs> you just think about it. Where are your original thoughts? You see what I'm saying? That's why we going to uh, dedicate this lecture to James Brown. Because his original thought. And as a result, we got the genius of that. You see? You see, but when you think about it, so when they look and they see these black leaders, and the black leaders are sitting up there because they're inferior. They feel that they can say the right thing in front of the white man. The white man can consider them as an option to take the world stage. And the white man is saying, look, I got all your ancient philosophy and all your ancient knowledge. I know what you're supposed to be thinking on. I know what you're capable of. And it's not being in the arena with me. Because my arena is fraudulent. You see what I'm saying? So anybody that's, you see, so anybody that's on that arena, they're already saying, look, you're a punk. You see, ain't no virtue and I want something different. But then again, on the other hand, why are we even considering white folks? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so in so many words, but I say that to say, they look at the leaders and they have come to the conclusion with their arrogance. They are infallible now. That look, there's nothing, we, you know, we must mobilize and neutralize the rise of a black messiah. And there was concern, you see what I'm saying? And they track us through our music. And every year they can tell the music is getting very advanced. And then thus we know that their consciousness will meet this music at a certain level. So what they did in the 1990s, they all but destroyed it. Have you heard this new rap from the South? <laughs> what is this? I mean, have you heard this thing? <laughs> I mean, the new rap from the South makes something that was 15 years ago sound like Mozart. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But it's showing you the complete deterioration and how the government fostered that program. Whereas you can't get nothing out of it that will spawn any kind, you see what I'm saying, of genius thought. You see what I'm saying? But that's all a part of the decoy. Because when they put us in a hole, they put themselves in a hole too. So the point I'm trying to make here is, they have discovered, and see, because you know, they will never really truly get to the truth. But they, in their minds, think that, look, we have them. We know what they're capable of, and they're not producing it, so therefore, we, we worry about the Mexicans. They have left us alone in that particular aspect, although they still keep status quo, that somebody got to be on the bottom. You see what I'm saying? But that is divine because it means now if the stage is set for rising, you see what I'm saying? If every summer it gets hotter and hotter than the last summer. You see what I'm saying? That is us rising. We're going ahead of ourselves. We're going to get into that. One of, uh, um, did the brother bring the Hennessy? Oh, he ain't got here yet. Just my luck. If I'm calculating right, nigga might be late. <laughs> I just say that shit for both. <laughs> 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 
when it came to the floor. In the other room where she was, the whole floor was gone. So that meant that she basically ascended. So, but it's interesting here because this Quan Yin is a tarot that came from Tibet and she turns into Quan Yin. This is the black goddess all over the world. There's a book, The Goddess of the Girl's Best Friend by, um, you don't need it, it's uh, Laurie Sue Brockaway. Laurie Sue Brockaway, The Goddess of the a Girl's Best Friend. It's very key that you get a hold of these bibliographies. We were, like I said, now we can't sit around now and not go out and get this particular information. It's provided for us. You see what I'm saying? So the best thing that I can do for you is to give you the source of material. You see what I'm saying? So this is, so that, that book, The Goddess of the Girl's Best Friend, it has a whole section on Tara, whole section on Kuan Yin. You see what I'm saying? Excellent book. But, um, uh, she made her transition and then I said, dang, Kuan Yin, okay. I see what that line of the Mentel Sing Sing aspect was. Now we have all types of things. I thought she was quite similar in India. Mm -hmm. You can even say, well, I could be some Native American too. See, if it's, it's amazing that you can see all these things. You see what I'm saying? But um, it means that we are more than just West Africa. Right. We are everything on the planet, mm -hmm. and especially the ones in the Western Hemisphere, mm -hmm. <coughs> and especially the ones in America. We are all of that. <clears throat> now, now, the History Channel proved last year that the Moors was over here just through white people ancestry where they got a, a group of white people they said it had African American in them, Arabic, um, some type of Moor, and Northern European. Anyway, it was from sons and daughters of the Moors. They call them the Melungeons. Mm -hmm. So they got this stuff and they said Elvis Presley was one, Ava Gardner was one, Abraham Lincoln. Same stuff that J.A. Rogers was saying years ago. Uh -huh. They came right on the, on, 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 on the TV, but they'll put it on a so-called strange universe. So that's to throw you off. <laughs> uh, it's, called, it's called Weird, the show is called Weird USA, or Weird, Weird US. So that's to throw you off. That's to tell all the scholars, go here and get your information.